Who's your shop? Um, haven't done a video in a while. Just thought I'd do a uh, random update. I'm going to go handheld. I'll take the camera around and uh, kind of show you what I've been up to. Alright, first thing, uh, let me back up kind of so I can frame the shot. So this is kind of my welding area, my tool cabinet, my bandsaw area. I got the uh, the cabinet installed on the wall. So let me show you a little bit. Alright, open that guy. Open that guy. Alright, I'm back up. I'm not tripping over. Alright, so I got my cabinet on the wall. And uh, it's uh, three, bu um, three foot by three foot, one foot off the wall in thickness. And uh, I cleaned it up and pressure washed it. I left the paint um, on it that was there. It's kind of a patina. So uh, there is uh, pegboard hooks. Um, this pegboard on the back is metal, metal pegboard, so I can buy the hooks because I don't have any. Put them in there. And uh, it's actually got wings that go in uh, six inches midway. Um, I took them out. I'm going to show you. Uh, deciding what I want to do. Yeah. So these are the wings. They're uh, steel and they're, uh, you know, pegboard uh, as well. And they're on a hinge. This is a hinge. Um, there you go. Whatever. So I don't know if I want to put the, uh, use it exclusively for a pegboard, I'm sorry, pegs. Or I could build some uh, wooden uh, shelves in there for my tooling. So, I'll give you a quick, I don't know, maybe I've showed you guys this before. Alright, so, you open um, the door and yeah, step that way. Alright. So, this, let me back up. This is the tooling cabinet. Yeah. Alright, don't worry about that. So this is a Rital electrical cabinet, and I kind of have a lot of uh, tooling in there for uh, my machinery. The uh, shelves are two by, I think two by ten. And two by tens are nine and a quarter, and they're, they're doubled up uh, front and back. Um, so like eighteen inches. Uh, of shelving uh, wide, and then I put a. I'm gonna come on in here. Not tripping. Remember I said without tripping. Um, this is tempered masonite on uh, top of the uh, two by tens. So you see, I got a uh, three quarter inch angle iron, and I got bolted in. So. Uh, Crosby Company, Buffalo, New York. There you go. But anyways, uh, so that's the tooling cabinet. My uh, my uh, massive stuff. So I thought I would. Uh, oh, this is pretty cool. So let me close this door. All right. So I got my microwave up there. This is an electrical um, rack mount cabinet. It was the radio transmitter from Buffalo State College. And uh, so I got gauge pins here. Uh, no, gauge blocks. Some vices, Kurt vices, uh, Kurt vices, gauge pins, and some stuff, and a chuck, and whatever. So this is really cool. I forget the name on it, but it's a very heavy duty cabinet. Wrinkle finish gray or blue gray. Uh, Three-quarter inch uh, plywood I put in for shelves, and it's great for storage. So I'm all about the storage. Yeah. The microwave seems to work pretty good up there. 
to microwave my coffee and then overhead storage. But anyways, if you turn around, um, yeah. So this, there's the uh, Giddings and Lewis, and there's the ladder for the scuttle hole for the attic. So now this space here, I've got my big Vanderman vise and a roll around table. I got the Gorton power feed on there and my torch cart. But watch this space, folks. This space is going to be reconfigured. And uh, my decal, SP1, I don't know why that's there. There's going to be a new machine coming to do the shop. So the vise is going to go in the high bay, and maybe this table and the bandsaw is going to get out of here. But anyways, watch this space. I bought a trailer, brand new trailer, and I'm going to get uh, another machine for the shop. So, okay, that's that. I am going to show you guys, I was talking to my friend uh, Mark on Grand Island, and we're talking about travel indicators to the lake. So let me show you guys, I have one... Uh, on the Harding and on the uh, uh, Tsugami Lathe. But first of all, this is the Harding HLVH. It's got a, uh, a mount for uh, an indicator that um, will indicate the carriage travel. And I don't know where I got it up. Yeah, it's in this whole box. But you can see it's just on a rod and it goes in there. It's simple as that. And uh, not a terribly expensive indicator, but it works. So let me uh, show you this. So let me turn the light on. Okay. So this is the uh, Tsugami lathe. It's a Japanese copy of a Harding Chucker lathe, a Harding HC. So you know, this has got the uh, all the tools that uh, revolve. This is typical uh, Harding chucker. Like I say, this is Sugami, and uh, you can you can drill with it and use the chuck. All you got to do is uh, there's a stop here. You just wind in the carriage till the stop. And uh, these lathes are underappreciated. You can get a Harding chucker, um, very reasonable. Uh, three thousand, two thousand dollars on eBay, um, less locally. But anyways, okay. So my friend Mark was asking. What we were talking about. He wants to get a DRO for his. Uh, he's got a clone of a Harding HLVH, a um, feeler uh, lathe. So we're talking about digital readouts, and uh, I said I get along just fine with my uh, travel, no, it's not travel dial, I guess it's kind of a travel dial. Tra travel dial is a brand name. This is just a, a two inch travel indicator. What you do is you loosen there and you move it out wherever you want. Tighten the knob. And it's just an aluminum block. Um, and it hits um, Right there. Ooh, well. Man, I don't know if the light's washing that out. Okay, better. More good or better. Um, so, I use this to do depths. So, zero is at like, zero's on top, 12 o'clock. So, I will set a, a zero. So, there's zero. Then you can count, you know, 50, 100, 50, 100. 50, 100. And, like I said, my friend Mark and I were talking about digital readouts. Now, with this specific chucker, it's got a, I mean, this thing's like a 7, 8 inch dial. This thing is very readable. Um, absolutely a joy and very easy to discern and it's got uh, a vernier 
um, on top there for splitting, you know, thousands. I don't know if that's showing up well. I had to add, this is kind of hokey, there's two nuts and a little nylon cap to uh, keep it balanced. This is perfectly, perfectly balanced now with the addition of these nuts for weight. But anyways, that's important on a lathe to have balanced dials. Um, so, okay, let me see this. One division is a 64th. It actually has some divisions um, for the uh, bed travel. But really, the bed travel, you know, is perfectly usable. And I think it's, it's actually a, a, a pleasure to use this because you can see when you're coming up to your number, you, you, you set your zero and then you, uh, it's almost like when you're approaching the bottom, if you're using a boring bar, you know, like, like a boring bar or a little boring bar, the, uh, you're approaching a depth and you count, you know, whatever, one, two, three, and, and there, you know that's hitting bottom. That's the end of the world. That's where you're, you know, just chatter out your boring bar, break it. That's the end of the world. And you can see when you're coming up to it. With a digital readout, your numbers are whizzing away and it's it's freaking crazy. It just, you know, people can't maybe imagine that this analog dial is, uh, I'm not going to say it's better. I'm not. It's, it's not more accurate, but it's more user friendly uh, I believe it just really is you know um, as far as approaching a zero and I know you're counting down T minus whatever on the digital readout but uh, I don't know I'm all about simple and what works and I've grown to love the simplicity and the predictability of this uh, you know uh, dial indicator set up be a backup shot so that's how it works I'm sorry I should have started off with a backed up you know shot but um, so that's the Sugami Chucker the Sugami thing's crazy accurate uh, for Japanese machine this thing is just quality quality I would almost say it's equal or better to a Harding uh, HC it's crazy so anyways, so this lamp, this is an OC white. And you can tell an OC white, it's got the dingleberries around the knob. And, and the newer knobs are a little different. They're kind of six-sided, fluted, or eights, I don't know. But this is an OC white. And I got, I got the other pieces over there, but um, I've, uh, so this, is, this rod is for the coolant or something, I don't know. But I just put this on here, and uh, I think I, I'm going to make an educated guess and say this is 1910. Like, this is Thomas Edison era, you know. But uh, I love this lamp, and they're real expensive on eBay. God knows why. They're just cool, and they work. That's the thing. Like, this clamp, I don't have a really good shot of it, but it's very adjustable. And it really is a ju it, it's so simple to adjust in this swivel, you know. Um, it's kind of a contradiction. This lamp is 1910, and this lathe is, I think, 19 early 80s, I believe. But you can see how let me back up. You can see how wide. I can't even. From, from there to there, it's, it's, it's a wide ca um, carriage, very rigid, dovetail bed, very very accurate and rigid machine, and yet the, the power feeds over here, but anyways, um, and it's pretty cool, with this, this is a threading, um, chase threading bar, you can swing, I use it for putting, in, swing down indicators, and I got a couple of them, whatever. But I just want to show you guys uh, the Sagami and uh, the dial indicator. So uh, 
just wanted to show that for Mark uh, to kind of put a picture to it for our conversation. Until next time, have a great week. This is Doozer's Shop.